Picture a steel door entombed in silence. Beyond it, a labyrinth of twisted piping, vitrified sand, and the frozen fury of the most infamous night in nuclear history. For nearly four decades, no human hand has turned its handle. But what if we did? What secrets, what dangers, wait behind Chernobyl's sealed access ways to the bowels of Reactor 4? Tonight, we go as close as anyone dares to ask the question few are brave enough to utter out loud. Should we open it? To understand the stakes, we need to step back into the physics still unfolding in the dark. Deep under the reactor hall lie fuel-containing materials, a hellish mixture of uranium fuel, control rods, concrete, steel and sand fused into glassy lavas. These masses are not dead. In 2021, monitors detected a slow but unmistakable rise in neutron counts in a sub-reactor chamber known as Room 3052, a sign that low-level fission is quietly smoldering inside the rubble like embers in a barbecue pit you can't douse because you can't even reach it. Scientists stressed there was no immediate danger, but the message was sobering. Beneath the sarcophagus, the story isn't over. It's evolving. Hook into the present day. The ruined reactor is not just entombed, it's entombed twice. In 2016, engineers slid a cathedral-sized arch, the new safe confinement, over the shattered Unit 4. That 108-meter-tall shell was designed to keep the ruins dry, limit dust, and, critically, create a controlled workspace to dismantle the original hastily built sarcophagus piece by piece. It's less a tomb than a movable shipyard for a century-long cleanup. Opening a breach into the heart of the reactor isn't a singular act. It's a carefully choreographed campaign enabled by cranes, filters, and remote tools housed inside that gleaming arch. Here's the shock. Even as the structure protects the world from the ruins, events outside the arch keep testing our assumptions. In 2022, the site fell briefly under military occupation, power was cut, and radiation monitors went dark. More recently, a drone strike near the plant rattled nerves. Radiation didn't spike, the inner shells held. But the message was clear. Nuclear safety isn't only about physics, it's also about geopolitics, cybersecurity, and resilience in a world that won't sit still. So, should we unseal doors and send teams into the labyrinth? The instinct says yes, bring out the fuel masses, neutralize them, and end the story. But the science says, not so fast. The rising neutrons in room 3052 are in a place no person or conventional robot can safely reach. The exact geometry of the fuel lavas and the water and chemical conditions around them controls fission like a delicate set of balances you don't want to jostle blind. Change airflow, humidity, or shielding the wrong way, and you might nudge the system towards more reactivity, not less. The paradox is brutal. Opening a door to fix the problem could be the very thing that worsens it. And yet, there's progress. British and Ukrainian teams have developed mapping tools and radiation-sensing drones that can operate in places no human can, capturing the spectral fingerprints of radiation and stitching them into 3D maps. In 2021, researchers even gained controlled access to the control room and areas within the arch to deploy novel sensors, translating ghostly counts into actionable engineering data. The plan is a patience plus precision, map, monitor, model, then move. Here's a twist that feels like science fiction. Life is adapting in the ruins. Melanin-rich radiotrophic fungi have been documented thriving in high radiation niches, apparently converting ionizing radiation into metabolic energy, an eerie mirror of photosynthesis. Their pigments absorb and dissipate energy, inspiring research into bio-derived radiation shielding Imagine future cleanups, and even spacecraft, lined with materials designed from organisms that first flourished on the walls of a shattered reactor. It's a startling reminder that nature doesn't merely endure, it innovates. But back to the door. What's physically behind it? Think of cathedral-sized halls collapsed into narrow canyons. 
corium elephant skin crusts draped over pipes like frozen lava falls, powdered hot dust that must never go airborne. In places like room 3052, slabs of concrete and steel pinwheel across the floor, sealing fuel fragments in random, dangerous arrangements. There is no straight corridor to walk down, no simple handle to grasp. There is only risk that must be turned into steps, each step into a plan, and each plan rehearsed by robots before a human ever sets foot. Here's the practical case against swinging anything wide open. The new safe confinement was built precisely to avoid crude intrusions. It maintains negative pressure and massive filtration so that when pieces are cut, dust is captured and air flows inward, not out. Any opening is really a surgical port with airtight staging, glove boxes, and remote manipulators. More like a spacewalk than a door dash. In other words, the only wise way to open Chernobyl is not to open it the way we imagine. Then there's the human calculus. The arch buys time measured in decades, time to fabricate custom tooling, time to license long-term fuel storage, time for neutron counts to drift downward as the chemistry of the rubble changes, something observers have already seen in other rooms, and time to keep watch. The International Atomic Energy Agency now maintains a continuous presence in Ukraine's nuclear sites, including Chernobyl, precisely to ensure that watch never blinks again. So, should we open it? Here's the honest verdict from the people who spend their lives modeling worst-case scenarios. Only as much as the plan requires. Only when the data says it's safer to intervene than to wait. And never in a way that trades one kind of uncertainty for another. The most radical choice is restraint. The discipline to prepare until opening is a series of sealed reversible actions, not a single dramatic reveal. Yet the cliffhanger is real. Sensors humming in the dark will either settle into silence or keep ticking upward in that stubborn chamber beneath the debris. Engineers are designing remote systems to reach deeper. Scientists are probing the chemistry of the lavas. Biologists are drawing inspiration from fungi that shrug at radiation. The path to open is being paved millimeter by millimeter with information. So yes, we should open it, but only the right way, slowly, quietly, scientifically. With the arches' filters humming, the monitors steady, the models verified, and contingency plans stacked like nesting dolls. The only door worth opening at Chernobyl is the one that will close behind us with the problem on our side and the risk left locked away forever. But Chernobyl isn't the only place hiding secrets humanity was never meant to uncover. Deep beneath the waves, scientists have stumbled upon something just as haunting, a lost ancient city buried underwater. A city that, by all logic, shouldn't even exist. The huge areas of the world that have never been looked at by archaeology at all. Or if looked at by archaeology, looked at only minimally. Of course, the most important are the flooded continental shelves. And that's why Santa and I spent seven years of our lives uh, scuba diving all around the world. Nestled at the westernmost edge of the Saurashtra Peninsula in what is now the state of Gujarat, India, the ancient city of Dwarka offers a narrative that is as rich in spirituality and mythology as it is in historical urban development. The calculation is that 27 million square kilometers that was above water during the Ice Age is underwater now. The city's strategic positioning near the confluence of the Gomati River and the Arabian Sea played a pivotal role not just in safeguarding it from potential invaders, but also in bolstering maritime trade and fostering connections with other parts of the ancient world. This geographical advantage, coupled with the city being enveloped by water on all sides, either as a peninsula or a series of islands, crafted a natural fortress that was a challenge for any adversary to overcome.